What is up guys? Welcome to Warsaw. So Warsaw is a turn-based tactical RPG game that takes place in the World War II era. So I've been watching this game for quite a while. I when I saw it, it first reminded me of Darkest Dungeon, which is one of my all-time favorite games. So I'm really excited to be playing this one. The game describes itself as challenging, which I really enjoy. I really like playing a good challenging turn-based strategy game where I can think about the things I'm doing, think about the moves I want to make, make plans and try to execute them, and then laugh and be miserable when they fail. I really enjoy that. I think it's a lot of fun. I'm hoping this game is going to be a lot like that. Before we get started, I want to say that if there is an option to rename the characters in this game, uh, feel free to leave suggestions down in the comments. If you want a character named after you, or you have a name that you like that you want me to name one of the characters, you can leave that down in the comments. As long as it's not overly profane or vulgar, I'm absolutely happy to do that. I think it adds a lot of fun to the playthrough and you know gets you guys involved. So keep that in mind as we start this game. I, there's not really any settings I already looked through, it's just audio. So I think we're gonna go ahead and jump in. I don't know if there's any difficulty settings. Maybe we'll find out. No. Okay, so wouldn't technically call that a cutscene. Looks like we're in a tutorial. The uprising begins, but before you are thrown in the deep end, you will play through a short tutorial. Well, let's not skip that because I have no idea how to play this game. This is a blind playthrough. I'm going to be learning as we go. Exploration. Right now you are exploring a fragment of the city and your party is represented by a unique symbol. You can see your current team inventory and available action points at the bottom of the screen. Your task is to complete the mission by fulfilling all the objectives shown in the upper left side of the screen. Movement on the map depletes your action points. Should you run out of action points before completing the given set of objectives, a mission will res result in failure. For now, however, continue along the street. To move your party fo toward the mouse cursor, press and hold the left mouse button. Okay, that seems straightforward. We've got 100 action points down here. Can I move the map around? I don't... It seems like as soon as we're going to move, I'm going to start depleting my action points. Yep. Is this our objective? That looks like a block... No, I think that's a blockade. I'm guessing that this cursor is pointing us to our objective. Along your... Encounters. Along your way through the streets and sewers of Warsaw, you will run into enemies, loot, and multiple choice events. Certain enemies may force you into combat if they spot you and you are in their danger zone, represented by a red circle around the enemy symbol. Consult the eye icon to check if the enemy can see you. Okay. Yeah, I see that eye icon. If any of these encounters are nearby, an arrow displayed near your party will direct you. Initiate the encounter by approaching it with your party and clicking on a button on on the event pop-up. Okay. That kind of makes sense. I imagine that the goal is probably to avoid encounters when we can. Now this doesn't look like combat. Obtaining ammunition. Your team needs ammunition before they can join the fight. Okay. Let's proceed. Obtaining ammunition. Before you set out for the rally point, the first order of business is to arm yourself. Your team arrives to receive their assigned share of ammunition from a resistance arsenal and not a moment too soon. A Nazi patrol appears in the distance, likely alarmed by the unusual activity in the district. If you want to rendezvous with the uprising, you will have to fight your way through. Huh. And then, are these my rewards or do I have to pick one? Looks like I might have to pick one. 
Oh, jeez. I think I'm gonna go with the short am ammo because it's got the highest number. Oh, wait. No, I don't select these. Okay. I th that must be their reward. Let's move out. Text events. Events usually offer multiple choices to pick from. Certain choices during these events may require spending resources or passing trait checks with one of your characters. Failing these checks will typically result in negative consequences and sometimes even death. Wow, that is harsh. All checks are clearly marked in the text. Now proceed with your party toward the next point of interest to enter the combat tutorial. Okay. So yeah, we did get all of that ammunition. Let's loot all of that. Looting. Supply drops, resource caches, discarded weaponry. While in the field, you will run into many opportunities to retrieve equipment from, for the uprising. When the loot window is open, click the items you wish to store in your inventory or the loot all button. Note that inventory space is limited, and should you go over capacity, you will need to leave some items behind. Items left in caches remain there until the end of the mission. Okay. Cool. Uh, it's similar to Darkest Dungeon, but actually this last bit is different, and that is a huge bonus compared to Darkest Dungeon, where items are lost forever. So we can do quite a bit of planning and manipulating to make sure we get items that we want. Okay. So it looks like we've got a fight here. I wonder what this is. That's interesting. That looks like gunfire being exchanged between buildings. Uh, I wish I knew where the hideout is. because I'm seeing that we could walk down this path around here to get past this blockade and potentially avoid this fight. I think for now, since this is the tutorial, it seems to want us to walk into this fight. I think we just do that. Patrol interception. Then this Nazi patrol needs to be eliminated if you were to reach the rally point. All right, well, let's go ahead and do that. Combat tutorial. This tutorial will explain the mechanics of combat. You may skip it if you wish, but it is recommended for first time players. Well, that's me. Let's go ahead and continue. Activations. In Warsaw, you begin each round with a number of activations equal to the number of combatants on your side. Activations are required to perform skills. Both sides alternate in using their activations, and the current round ends when both sides use all of their allotted activations. Now try activating a combatant. Okay, that makes sense. Highlight using the mouse and press the left mouse, bu mouse button to select Christoph. Christoph. Uh, okay. Examining skills. Highlight a skill using the mouse to display a tooltip and markers that show the starting position required for performing that skill. Okay. Highlight target acquired, as indicated by the red target grid in the tooltip, it is an offensive skill. Oh, I see. The, it, because it's red. Select it by pressing the left mouse button and to target selection. Okay. When you select the skill, markers showing the range of the skill will appear. You can only target enemies within range. Keep in mind that most skills have a more limited range. Highlight using the mouse and press left mouse button to select the enemy grenadier as your target. Well, it looks like that's probably this guy with the grenades. I notice that they don't seem to have names, though. Okay, but I think it's this guy. Let's try it. Okay. Target acquired. I think it's more like target shot. Uh, but okay, target acquired. Stamina. You have successfully damaged an opponent with your skill, but it costs you some ammunition and a point of stamina. Stamina is displayed under the combatant's health bar. The combatant's effectiveness relies on their stamina level. Three stamina, no penalties. Two stamina, accuracy reduced by 10%. One stamina, all damage received increased by 20%. That's huge. Zero stamina, combatant cannot be activated. All combatants regenerate one point of stamina each round. So that's pretty cool. It seems like you, know, you get three activations. You could use the same person three times if you really wanted to. Although clearly there's a penalty here for doing such a thing. Uh, but it's cool to know that the option is there. Grenade throw. Okay. Area of effect skills. Some skills are able to affect more than a single target. If so, it will be indicated in their tooltip as area. In addition, the skill will highlight multiple targets during the targeting and animation steps. Now it is time for your second activation. Use a defensive skill for a change. <laughs> Alright. Select Jadwiga. I'm not... I'm probably saying that wrong. Select first aid is indicated by the green target grid. Okay. When using defensive skills, the target marker appears on your left side. Target Kristoff. 
Ristolf. All right, let's target him. Cool. Back up to full health. Cover. Notice that your character took reduced damage. Standing right behind the obstacles grants combatants additional armor, reducing the damage they receive. Keep in mind, however, that obstacles will get damaged too. Okay. Select Kristolf. Auxiliary skills. Notice that you have other options aside from using offensive or defensive skills, such as moving your character or skipping the activation altogether. While both use up an activation, only movement affects stamina. Try moving Kristoff to a better position. Okay, so we can move at the cost of stamina, or we skip, and then everyone just gets their stamina regeneration. Select movement. Huh. So, it looks like... Right, because it looks like it's 3D. Right, there, there's a front rank and a back rank. But this makes me think that that's not necessarily the case, or... Select the empty tile behind... Oh, it wants me to move back here. Okay. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, like, is this spot behind this? Or is this spot behind this? I'm not actually sure. Okay, well, let's move here for now. Since that's what it's telling us to do. Select decrease stuff. Select target acquired. Flanking. Combatants on both sides occupy tiles of one or two horizontal lanes. All targets attacked from the other lane are considered flanked and receive 15% bonus damage. Note that this applies both to your party and the enemies and does not apply to, hev to enemy heavy weapons or armored units. Now it is time to make use of this bonus. Target the enemy grenadier. Okay, so there are two horizontal lanes. So I think I would have had to be in this slot to use this as cover. And now am I still covered by this guy? The gangster? I'm not sure. Uh, okay, well, let's target the enemy. Yeah, and it says we're flanking up there in the top right. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Draw out. Oh, wow. That's dirty. Select Casimir's. It is time to use a buff. Select Contraband Ammunition. Note that you cannot use Mow Down because of your incorrect position. Okay, yeah, I'm familiar with that. Contraband Ammunition. Increases the chance to apply Burn by 80%. Apply Bleed by 80%. Apply Bleed Chance or Burn Chance one stamina. Okay. Buffs. Skills can apply an array of buffs, which are displayed as icons near combatant's portrait. You can hover over those icons to check their effects in remaining duration. Okay. Each activation in each new round decreases the duration counter. Okay. So each activation decreases the counter. Interesting. Bleed and bleed. They both got bleed chance. Debuffs. Some skills also apply debuffs to enemy targets. Burn and bleed inflict damage over time. Blind decreases the target's accuracy and suppression prevents the target from performing skills altogether. That's huge. Like with buffs, each activation in round decreases the de debuff's remaining duration. Try to apply debuff to your opponent now. Okay. Select degree stuff. Single shot. Was that bleed? 7 to 8 damage every tick. Okay. And it's got an 80% chance to bleed, I see. 21 to 27 damage. One stamina. Okay. Pressing... If you need, you can unselect a skill by pressing the right mouse button. I did that, and it doesn't seem to be working. I wonder if that's because we're in the tutorial? Alright, well, let's target the enemy rifleman. And he's bleeding. Win the battle. This concludes the guided combat mechanics tutorial. You will now be given a free reign to finish the fight as you see fit. Oh boy. Uh, well that's a little nerve wracking. This is pretty complicated. There's a lot to think about here. Do I get a second activation in a row here? Well, 
in my opinion, this guy's already dead after his neck. Well, I guess he still has three activations. Oh, can I not? Is he in the front ranks? Yeah, okay. I can only hit the back ranks. But I can do target acquired. Maybe I should hit this guy to try to finish him off. Let's try that. Dead. Dead, son. Okay. Eating the grenade throw there. Sorry about that, Casimirs. So, okay. Stamina is empty on Kristoff. We should not be using him anymore. We have two activations in a row. Maybe let's use first aid on Casimirs. Oh, nice, the crit heal. And then now it's our turn again. Full auto. Oh, that looks awesome. 19 to 28 damage, six ammo. Looks like we have quite a bit of ammo to spare. I should probably not gonna be too worried about that for right now. Let's see if we can finish this guy off. Pretty close. Now I expect that he'll get the first turn next round. That would seem fair, but I guess not. Now I wonder how the alternating works then, because I just went and it's given me yet another turn. 94% accuracy, that's really good. I think I gotta use that one. That's got the best accuracy. Let's try to use that. Clear shot. Oh, I can't hit him from here. Shoot. Okay. Let's use, uh, 75, 78, 6 ammo, 6 ammo. Full auto it is. Nice. Okay. I think we handled that pretty well. We're almost at full health. Victorious, defeated enemies. Two guys two plebs let's proceed death and survival remember death is permanent whether in battle or events it is vital to keep your characters alive and well especially since their health does not replenish automatically while certain rewards may appear promising sometimes it is better to limit your risks and avoid combat altogether so very much in the same style as darkest dungeon i really am liking this so far this is very cool okay so here's uh i forget what these are called but our chance to get something. With the patrol gone, your team should have a clear path for now. Proceed. Arrival. Having emerged victorious from the first real engagement, your team descends into the city's sewer network to reach the rally point. There is little time to celebrate, however, for the hard part comes next. The uprising is now in full swing. The long battle has begun. Let us proceed. Return to the hideout when all objectives are for... Are for are the, are fulfilled, an icon will appear in the upper left part of the screen. Press the complete mission button to return to your hideout. Very much, okay. A lot of similarities in this game as uh, Darkest Dungeon, which I'm not gonna complain about. Uh, there's definitely some cool differences as we've already seen blockade there. I'm just gonna explore a little bit, I think. It doesn't seem that there's any harm in that. Yeah, definitely some differences from Darkest Dungeon that seem very interesting, and I'm excited to explore, but also a lot of familiar mechanics, which I think will just help me get into the game quicker and just play better. It's complete mission. You are victorious. Now, what's that? Injuries. Characters who suffer damage above a certain threshold suffer an injury. Injuries will reduce that character's health when they return to the hideout, and will have to be treated in the hospital. Oh, that's neat. It's kind of like a, an XCOM mechanic. Commendation. Currency for ranking up characters. Okay. Wow. Cool. Let's go. Yeah. Return to hideout. Mission summary. Carrying out missions takes time. At the end of every mission, you will receive a quick summary of all the gains and losses of the uprising. You will also get to resolve all the events that have transpired in the meantime. Okay. So let's see. Day two. I've got a date here. Plus one days. I'm not sure. Is that just counting up that's that would be the same as this pretty much minus one I'm not okay I'm not sure what plus one days is uprising momentum 99% that seems good it's down 1% not sure how that happened war assets difference between war assets generated by all districts and the value needed to keep the momentum chain unchanged on a given day affects how fast the uprising momentum will drop okay interesting that explains the minus 20 here 
I will be curious to see how we manipulate these numbers. Income. So is this just like a passive income that we have right now? Some supplies and ammo. Districts. Oh, interesting. So we have different districts that are giving us various supplies and assets. And I imagine that these things will change. We'll be able to influence these and probably conduct missions in these districts. And the outcome of those missions will determine how the, the supplies that they generate change. Health insurgents have recovered 25% of their health. Not sure what that means. Event, love thy neighbor. Okay. It doesn't look like I have any other information to figure out what that means. I guess we proceed from here. Doesn't seem like there's anything I can do or click on. Let's proceed. Love thy neighbor. Okay. The chatter leads you face first into a spectacle of mob judgment. It appears that the residents of a nearby tenement house have rounded up a handful of their Volksdust neighbors. I have no idea what that means. The Rouse crowd calls out to your group to deal with the collaborators. Um. Huh. Agree and approach the crowd. Decline and tell the crowd to clear out. I feel like I'd be able to make a better decision if I knew what Volksdust uh, meant. Let's agree and approach the crowd. Hearing out the pleas, you step into the mob to act out their will. The question of severity still remains, however, and some of the residents call for an alternate alternative form of punishment. Execute the collaborators. Seize. Execute seems pretty harsh. I mean, stealing isn't much better. Let's go with seize. You decide to confiscate their private wealth in service of the uprising. Although your decision is met with audible disapproval by the witnesses, a quick concession to split some of the goods between the residents proves enough to dissolve further tensions. I'm not sure that I handled that the best. I was a little bit confused as to what was going on. But we did get some stuff. Attrition gained in one of our districts and some supplies. So I guess uh, I didn't do the worst. Okay, so that was the summary. We just did the event. And now we go to the next day. Oh, wait. Determines how much a district's morale will drop every day. Okay. No, I did take a penalty there. I thought I would it increase their morale, but I increased their attrition. Failing or ignoring a mission will cause the district's attrition to increase by one. Interesting. Okay, so we're really going to have to balance the attrition of these different districts with their morale. That seems like it's going to be challenging. Okay, well, let's proceed. Day 2, August 2nd, 1994. I'm sorry, 1944. I'm enumerate. I can't read. Hideout tutorial. You have reached the resistance hideout, your base of operations between assignments. You can either view the tutorial explaining the hideout or skip ahead. Definitely the tutorial, please. Resistance hideout. Here you can plan new missions, oversee party recovery, manage spare equipment, and recruit volunteers for the cause. These activities can be accessed with the assistance of specialist NPCs. Your current and future party members will also be present here. Current and future party members? Press the left mouse button on a character's portrait to open their character menu. Okay. So we've got NPCs. I don't... Par future and current and future party members so we have our party that goes on missions and then I assume we have a roster of heroes that we can also swap in and out of our party that's how darkest dungeon works I would assume that this game would work in a similar fashion but perhaps not um, let's explore so this is Kristolf he's reading a book character overview view here you can see your character's attributes, traits, equipped weapons, and skills. If you wish to adjust your equipment or skill set, proceed to the corresponding tabs. Okay. Alright guys, so it looks like I can't change this guy's name. So that thing I said about naming characters down in the comments, looks like that's not going to happen, but uh, at least they have decent names. So... 
he's got like base stats I see resilience I don't know what that is he's got some resistances traits curious to find out how those work some weapons very neat and then his skills I will probably take a moment outside of the video to read through these to make sure I understand entirely how they work I think for now we just continue and we can explore them in combat equipping skills to equip a skill press the left mouse button on any skill you wish to equip then press the left mouse button on the skill slot of your choice Skills marked with a red background are weapon skills. These are meant to deal damage and will consume ammunition. The available skills will change depending on the equipped weapons. Okay, so skills are tied to the weapons then, if I'm reading this correctly? Different skill colors signify personal skills, abilities individual to each party member. Okay, characters unlock new skills with each promotion. So they do have unique skills that are specific to them. And then it seems that the other skills are based on the weapons that they have equipped. At least that's how I'm reading that. I see that also some of these different skills have different stamina requirements. Hmm. Interesting. Weapons. To equip a weapon, press the left mouse button on the weapon you wish to equip, then press the left mouse button on a matching weapon slot. Each combatant has a predefined set of weapon types they can carry, and each weapon provides you with two skills native to its type. You cannot equip two weapons of the same type. That's fair. So, okay, we don't have any weapons to change around. Okay, so there's a weapon type and an ammo type. Heavy ammo, heavy weapon. Rifle, long ammo. Rifle, long, okay. I think that's how that works. Ranking up. By completing missions, your party might obtain commendations. This shared resource can be used to promote your characters to higher ranks. Each character can rank up three times, and every time they do so, they gain one ability from a choice of two. Note that the order of receiving these sets is not constant and will vary with each playthrough. Oh. Additionally, some character rank ups will also grant an extra ability. Interesting. Okay. Only three rank ups. That seems like not a lot. So my... That makes me think that either we're going to get a lot of party members that we can use. Right? Because this is a shared resource. If we were to get, let's say, one per mission, it would only be nine missions before everyone was fully ranked up. So I'm sure that's not the case. Either these are pretty rare, or we're going to have a lot of party members to spread these out amongst. Or, I guess the other alternative is that it's a very short game, and the value of this game comes from the replayability. I, I would not expect it to be that short. Uh, I guess we'll find out. I'm sure we're going to get more party members. I mean, the game already implied that. Um... Uh... Let's check out our other our other party members real quick. Academics intuition. She's got the first aid. Repelling fire. Push an enemy back one tile. That's neat. Okay. She's missing a skill. We just don't have another one for her. She's only got one weapon. But apparently she could have another. I thought it was up to two weapons. If I'm remembering right. Okay, so this is like a bonus skill here. This is what I was talking about earlier. Push an ally back three tiles from in the front of the user. Push an ally... Pull an ally back three tiles from in front of the user. I don't quite understand what that means. Oh, it decreases the stamina cost by one? That seems really good. An area of effect heal. That is pretty cool. Okay. How about uh, Casimir's? Charm and intuition. Okay, so he's like her uh, can talk to people guy. 
He'll probably have lots of checks during missions for certain events. He's got some kind of machine gun. And then the rifle. We don't have either of his rifle skills equipped, it seems. But we have his buff. Suppression. Cannot act. Hmm. Well, I don't have a good sense of swapping out any skills right now. I, I feel like we just let this be the way that it is. Hmm. I feel like I should be using this rank up. Maybe let's just take a little bit closer look at the, the level or the rookie skills here. Increases accuracy. Now see, this has two different things. Damage up one, accuracy up one. Oh, and it applies both, I see. That seems pretty good. Blind to decrease accuracy by 25%. That also seems very good. Duration three, duration three. Hmm. Okay. Let's just remind myself of hers. An area of effect heal. And a buff. Decreases stamina cost by one. Plus the bonus skill, which I don't really understand. Yeah, I don't really. It does. It says it does damage, but then it says pull an ally back. Are those both things that it does? It damages, but also. I, I don't get that. I'm not understanding what that means. Which makes me not want to get it. Retaliation. Um, fire at infantry enemies targeting the home army soldier or okay so he's like on overwatch if somebody attacks him he attacks them back that's how I'm reading that blow for blow will fire at armored or heavy weapon enemies targeting the home army soldier or adjacent characters and it's like an area of effect overwatch he protects the guys around him so it seems like he could put out a lot of damage very quickly so i really like these three oh wow three stamina on both of them but that uh just really makes effective use of an activation they're really strong abilities and then it makes more sense to use our other characters on the other activations while he continues to yeah, I guess it doesn't say how long these last. How long do these abilities last? I'm not sure. Well, let's just try one. Let's rank him up. Yes. Oh, wait. I have to pick one. Oh, jeez. This one uses a lot more ammo. And does less damage, but has slightly higher accuracy. But this one only fires at armored or heavy enemies. And this fires at infantry. Let's hit, have him try to, like, take out infantry characters. I don't know if that's smart, but <laughs> that's what I did. <laughs> oh, and I see two are required for the next one. Okay, so that changes this a little bit. That makes, that makes sense that these cost more of the uh, commendations. Okay, maybe let's check out some of these NPCs here. The informant is your window into the status of the uprising. Here you can monitor the overall condition of the uprising as well as individual resistance pockets in specific districts. To keep the fight going, each day the uprising consumes war assets that are provided by districts. By default, war assets are in deficit to represent the uprising gradually slowing down. Your task is to manage this deficit and prolong the uprising by keeping all districts' morale high. Reaching zero momentum means that the uprising is unable to go on and the game ends. When you are all set, click on new mission. Okay. Well, uh, we've got our work cut out for us. We know exactly how we will lose. So we just need to keep our momentum up. I like that. There's, there's no secrets here. That's just what we're doing. Missions, excursions, allow you to aid your districts by sending supplies to replenish a portion of their morale. Every time your party returns to the hideout, there's a 50% chance that a damaged district will be av available to receive an excursion. Okay, so we spend supplies to increase morale. That is simple enough. Let's go in order of the list down here. Let's check out the nurse. 
The nurse allows you to monitor the health status of your party and their recovery rate. Any healing performed in the field is temporary and does not carry over. Upon return, characters will be at the lowest health level they had during the mission. Whoa! Okay. That's crazy. That's substantial. To recover permanently, they will need to see the nurse. Although you can take the wounded party members out for missions, the hideout is the only place where they will regenerate health over time. Okay, so they regenerate health over time passively, or is that only when I have the nurse heal them? I wonder. No. Okay, well, since there's no injured insurgents in the hideout, I guess he's fine then? He's just fine from the tutorial? I'm okay with that. The Provisioner. The Provisioner serves as the trade hub of your hideout. It is important. Oh, I'm sorry. It is through her that you are able to purchase your basic equipment, repair any damaged gear, and sell unwanted weaponry, weaponry and excess ammunition. All trades with the Provisioner use supplies as the currency. Aside from trading, you can obtain supplies through activities during missions. Okay. Are these things that I can buy? These appear to be like I could buy commendations if she had any, I guess. She's got supplies. Huh. Increases movement efficiency during the mission. Is that cons that is consumable supply? It says right there, but I was about to ask that. It's consumable. It's still pretty good though. Bandages, that's pretty good. Reveals all points of interest in the currently visible area. That also seems quite good. Okay. Uh, let's check out the guy with the glasses. The archivist gives you access to the codex, which allows you to learn the detailed backstories of your insurgents. You may also access short reports on your unlocked weapons and enemy units you have encountered in combat. Okay. So we could probably read like strengths and weaknesses of different enemies that we find. I would imagine. There's our characters here. I'm not going to read about those right now, but maybe at some point, uh, if you guys want to hear about them, definitely let me know and I'd be happy to read those. Oh, what I really want to see is enemies. Okay, I'm not going to read all this. I was just looking to see if they had like strengths and weaknesses or anything, but it's, it seems more it's just like a uh, lore, just, you know, fun stuff to read, which I'm also, again, happy to read any of this stuff. Just let me down the, do, let me know down in the comments if you, know, you want me to read any of these. Otherwise, I, I'll skip it just for the sake of time. The recruiter. The recruiter allows you to enlist volunteers. Volunteers are not as capable as your unique ins as your unique insurgents. For instance, they cannot rank up and always join the team with random characteristics. They allow you to fill gaps in your team composition and stand in for wounded char cover characters dur during their recovery. Enlisting volunteers cost supplies. Okay, so it seems like a, a very temporary solution that is not cost effective, but in a pinch. Uh, this is something that we might need to consider if we don't have the guys to go on a mission and the mission is critical. Okay, well that's really cool. I like that. Uh, let's check out the last guy here. Looks like a priest. I don't have a good feeling about this. The priest. Visiting the priest allows you to see the list of all resistance fighters who have fallen in the service of the uprising. Very sad. Let's hope that we never have to come here. <laughs> like, ever. Okay. Well, I think we're ready for a mission. That's what I'm ready to do. Let's look. I guess I just click new mission here. Mission selection. Every time you set out, the informant will mark your map with available missions. Each mission takes several days to complete. As your team cannot be everywhere at the same time, you can pick only one mission at a time. Any remaining missions will fail, so pick your engagements wisely. Select a district with a mission symbol to see the details. Okay, we've got three options here. I don't, I don't know what these different like areas are. Districts and missions. Reviewing mission details allows you to check its duration, required objectives, and rewards. When a mission fails, the district gains a point of attrition. District details show its current morale and accumulated attrition. With each passing day, all districts' morale will drop with a decrease equal to their attrition value. Keep in mind that a district's income will be affected by low morale. If a district's morale drops to zero, it will surrender, denying you both income and missions. Okay. That's bad. So at all costs, we really need to maintain all of these districts. Hmm, so I'll, I'll probably want to be weighing the income that we get from them. 
the objectives, like how, how long it is, four days. That's pretty long, I think. We get a commendation, a damage grenade. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why we would want that. Failing or ignoring this mission will result in the district getting one nutrition point. Damage revolver. We get a lot more income and stuff from this one. So let me start it. Am I on one? Let me start on one. Neutralize enemies, damage, grenade, attrition, three days. Right, and they have different base morale. So that's also something to consider. Points of attrition are relatively worse on these areas with low morale. And I guess there's no mission here, okay. So we get a lot from this one. 12 war assets, six supplies, but it's five days and their morale is pretty low too. Repair resistance barricades, interesting. Now see this, they've got 90 morale. I probably don't have to worry about these guys immediately unless they've got like really good rewards or something. They've already got one point of attrition, which is my mistake. Okay, so I'm thinking this one because we get pretty good income from them and their morale starts off kind of low already. Although, man, that duration seems long. But we're going to try it anyway. We'll see how it goes. Before embarking on a mission, you need to choose your party composition within the specified limit. To pick a character, press the left mouse button on the character you wish to choose and then press the left mouse button on a free grid tile. Remember, proper positioning is crucial for your party to succeed, as for each battle, your characters will enter combat in the formation you set on the screen. In Darkest Dungeon, you are able to change the order around during the mission. It seems like that's not the case here, so we're going to want to be extra sure that we set them up exactly how we want them. Equip your party with enough ammunition to complete the mission by pressing the left mouse button. Okay. On desired ammo type, but do not go overboard. If you find any useful items, you will need free space in your inventory to pick them up. Wow. This is a quite the balancing juggle act here. Juggling act. I didn't hire this guy, I thought. I don't believe that I spent supplies on you, sir. I'm not sure why you're trying to come along. Now, I, it didn't... It said pick our team within the specified limits, but I didn't actually see what those limits are is it are we limited by number of people i would imagine so okay this is good we can see where people are effective from it says she okay she's most effective from the first two slots but that's really just for her repelling fire she's got low health i feel like we probably want her in the back where she can just heal people up and maybe use her clear shot for when we need to finish guys off. So let's select her and put her here. Casimir's looks like I think he does best in the back. In that, yeah, that appears to be the case. We could maybe put him here. Can we? We can take this guy with us. I don't think we want to. Should I? I don't know. I'm so confused. I thought he was somebody that we could, like, hire. I think I'm not going to take him. And then, Kristoff, I think... I think we'll put you in this slot here. I think this is what we want. Now, how do I know... how much ammo to take? I don't have anything to go off of here, unless I, I guess, look at, just get a feel for how much ammo their abilities use. That seems tedious, especially when I can't see them while they're over here. I feel like I need some information about ammo per skill usage. Well, let's see. Heavy, long. Long, long. Just long. Short, short. Three and six. Do I just 
Why would I need... Oh, that's heavy ammo. I don't think I have anybody using heavy ammo. Oh, yeah, I do. Six. How many times do I think I want to use that? I feel like four is probably plenty. But I honestly have no idea. Oh, geez, this is very difficult. I think we stick with... We, hit, we use a lot of long ammo for sure. I'm pretty sure of that. I'm not totally sure about all the short ammo that we're bringing because it's just uh, Jadwiga. I think maybe we put some of this back. I don't know how much. Maybe we just keep like 10 and then that will hopefully get used up quickly and clear up a slot for us. Let's try it. I don't know. I might fail terribly, but I, I want to push on and explore this game some more. Repair resistance barricades. Let's check this out. That looks glorious. Barring passage. Repair resistance barricades. Okay. This is our one of our objectives. Your team fully commits to re reinforcing the barricade. Thanks to your efforts, it should be able to repel the enemy for a little while longer. Perfect. Uh, let's see what's down here. What the indi indicator is pointing us to. Uh-oh. Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> uh, I feel that I just made a huge mistake. We just walked into a huge fight. There's four, five, four guys in a dog. What's this guy got like a flamethrower? A Brent Commando. I have no idea what that is. This is very scary. Very scary. I'm thinking use full auto. I think we just go nuts on these guys. I'm already super scared. Oh no, that's just the front ranks. Do we take out that dog? Seems like he's very dodgy. Oh, this is three. Oh, man. I'm already so scared. I, th I think let's try to take out these guys. I'm looking at their, their health here and it seems like I might be able to take them out a little quicker. And then they just swapped. Who swapped? This guy? No, this guy. Okay. All right, and I can pick whoever I want. <clears throat> Excuse me, I kind of forgot about that. I also don't think I swapped any abilities around, which I am an idiot for doing that. Yikes. This uses two stamina, but I can hit two guys. 10% less damage to each subsequent target. Let's try it though. I really feel like I need to take care of this guy who looks like he's got a flamethrower. Okay, that did some serious damage. Okay. Oh, I'm bleeding and he pushed me back. Not a fan of that. I think I'm going to keep trying to mow these guys down. Oh, a miss. That hurts. <laughs> that really hurts. Yeah, yeah draw out not a fan of that In position. oh god yeah he's setting up for something Tricky. what buffs does he have oh now the dog is buffed resilience by 20% chance to resist suppression by 40 all damage by 30 oh my gosh are we supposed to be able to win this fight I feel like we are about to get creamed I'm thinking maybe I move into cover, but then I'm flanked by this guy. Do I single shot? Oh, I can almost kill that guy, but I can't. Not with Kristoff. Can I, uh, let me right click clear that. Can I full auto this guy and take him out? I think that's what I'm going to try to do. Nice. Okay. I feel that I have dodged a flamethrower. <laughs> oh no we're already pretty low on health here do I use the first aid kind of think I use first aid I guess it doesn't um oh and he's suppressed it doesn't heal the bleed unfortunately Oh, 
And he can't do anything because he's suppressed. That is unfortunate. Because Casimiris is getting low on health. So I think we don't take an action... Or not health, stamina, sorry. I think we are going to take our clear shot. The dog seems like a little bit of a problem. Causing bleed and... and um, sw Swapping our guys around when we don't want it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Seas. Wow, guys, there is a ton of stuff going on in this game. This is quite complicated. I feel like maybe I should be using first aid. She's getting close to half health. Or do I move her? Do I use somebody else? Do I use clear out again? Take out the try to take out the dog and the guy who keeps giving him commands. Take it. Try to hit these guys. That's a lot higher accuracy, but they also combined have more health. I think let's try to take out the weaker guys. That was a solid hit. The dog is almost dead. Okay, we got the lucky miss there. That definitely makes me feel a little better. Can we take 54%? That is not. It does not inspire confidence. Could, we could try mowing them down. That's even worse odds, but the damage is quite a bit better. Let's try it. Oh, two misses. That's what I get. I should have known better. I wonder if I can switch around our guy's abilities during the mission. I suspect no. I think we try to see if we can take out this dog. Although we've only got one stamina. Maybe we try with Joiga or yeah, Jedwiga. Shoot, that dog is very dodgy. I'm maybe wasting my time trying to kill him. And Shibby's trying to hit him with AOE. That'd probably be smarter. Why can't I use... Oh, I'm not in the right slot. Okay. That's for front rank. That does me no good. I could do my single shot. I, I could move. I could move this guy back so he can use mow down. Or maybe I just use my single shot here. Let's focus on this guy. Oh, nice. Good crit. That's what we needed. Resisted the bleed. Nice. Oh, I want to try to take out this dog. I'm going to try it at 65%. There we go. Uh, although we do leave Kristoff pretty exposed. He's flanked by both of these guys, and he has zero stamina. Looks like they're not targeting him, though. I feel like we probably need to use some first aid. <laughs> So I totally acknowledge that uh, I, I feel that I'm doing a pretty bad job at this game. There's a lot going on here. Uh, I hope that you all will excuse my poor performance in this first episode. And honestly, let's be honest, probably a few more episodes while I try to get a grasp of this game. It is quite, quite involved. A lot of stuff going on here. A lot of things to keep track of and think about. It's probably going to take me a little while to get my head around this game. I'm feeling very much like going straight for damage is my best bet here. Shoot. And just managing the stamina. I don't know. Taking a move feels very inefficient but I guess like in this case I can't even do anything oh and I can move anywhere that is actually I didn't quite realize that at first I can move anywhere that's pretty good yikes Jedwiga is in pretty rough shape Do I try to take that guy out or do I heal? 
feel like probably it's better to heal and be safe. Alright. Got a miss there. That helps. Yeah, I feel like we need to take out this front guy. Full auto. The accuracy's not great. Okay, we got the hit though. He's close. He's getting there. Okay, that can only hit the back rank. Target acquired. Oh, jeez, that hurts. Need to get rid of this guy. He's just throwing grenades at us nonstop. Come on. Oh, my goodness. These misses are killing me. I think, uh, right, that first stamina point is hurting our accuracy. And I'm really feeling it. I guess let's heal up. Since she can't hit the guy that I'm trying to kill. Why am I not going back up to three stamina? Shouldn't I be going back up to three stamina? Have I misinterpreted the mechanics? I thought each activation characters recovered stamina, or is it just each round? Maybe it's each round? I'm not sure. I feel like we should be getting stamina back. Oh, finally. Okay, I think we can just gang up on this last guy now. Nice. That is a solid hit. And it's nice, We well, once you get the numbers advantage... I would have to move back. Let's go ahead and do that. Yikes. Yeah, let's try mowing him down. Oh my goodness, that was a huge crit. All right, we almost got him. Do I want to heal or do I just want to end this? I feel like I really want to end this. Nice, okay. Uh, I feel like I came out of that not bad, although I was really freaking out there for a second. That felt overwhelming. Uh, what is this? Do they have supplies here for us? Enemy garrison, heavy ammo, a compass. Reveals all points of interest. Okay. I don't know what this gold indicator is, but I feel like I want to follow that. I realize that I'm not moving efficiently here. I've, I've backtracked quite a bit. Head up this way. Oh, shoot. Oh, I can move through here. I was so, oh, okay. I thought these were like blocks that I couldn't move through, but I can totally move through those. Okay. Cool, repaired the barricade. Continue. Is this another barricade? Hostile forces, enemy approaching. This seems like a battle? Yes, holy cow. Oh my goodness, I sort of wish I didn't do this. Well, this seems like definitely the right move to do. Hit all three of these guys? We're probably not gonna get that opportunity a whole lot. Yeah, that was a huge amount of damage. Ugh. And then mow them down, I think. Let's just hammer these guys. Yikes. I think I'm gonna use mow down again. I, we're taking an accuracy penalty here, but we've got a pretty good chance to kill two of these guys. 
Nice, and we did. We missed the guy in the back, unfortunately. I will say I'm pretty confused about the way stamina is working now. I feel like they should be going back up to three. Maybe we should try to give it a little test here. I won't use Casimir's or Casimir's and we'll see if he gets his stamina back after this round. Single shot. Or target, I think let's use target acquired, see if we can whittle this guy down. Nice. Okay, he did. He went back up to three stamina. I must have just not been paying close attention. Everyone gets back one stamina after the end of a round. I kind of want to use the clear out back here. It puts me at zero stamina. Maybe that's not the best move. Maybe we should try to be finishing off uh, this guy here. 70% chance, flanking, or do we... Oh, I can't hit him with that. Sixty-seven percent chance. Yeah, let's try the uh, full auto here. And uh, if I'm reading this right, we are very low on our long ammunition. That I appear to have made a huge error. <laughs> oh boy, I appear to have made a huge error, not bringing more long ammo. Well, that's not good. Let's keep using this heavy ammo then. Oh, we missed the little captain guy in the back. German officer. Interesting. What is he buffing up? This guy's resilience. How can I hit him? How can I take this guy out? I feel like I have to move. I don't think I have a choice here. I've got to move. Nice. Couple misses there. Let's use this repelling fire, finish this guy off. Very nice. Then we just have to take out these last two guys. This actually went not too bad because I used that rocket launcher a couple times. We're about to use the last of our long ammo. I'm feeling pretty dumb right about now, having not brought enough ammo. Oh, and I can only hit this guy, but that's fine. That's a that's a buttload of damage. Both, both. Wow. Okay. Well, we still have our our other special skills. I think we need to uh, give it to Jadviga so she can use the ammo that we brought. Luckily she can hit these guys back here. Well, this guy, I guess. Shoot. Never mind. She cannot hit him. Oh, we're getting low on health here, too. We need to, to heal up. Let's do that. Oh, nice. All three misses. Yikes. That's too stamina. That's why we can't use that. Should we suppress, maybe? No, let's use the contraband ammo. Give her a little bit more uh, damage here to try to finish these guys off. There we go. He resisted. Of course he did. Oh, and she's out of stamina. Shoot. Well, let's use our clear out again. We're going to end up using all of our heavy ammo as well, and then we're really going to be in trouble. Let's fake this guy out. All right, so we made him move and... Right, but he's not suppressed anymore. He's only suppressed for that activation, I think. 
Well, I think we have to do that again. Yep, he's suppressed. And let's try to f finish him? No, shoot. Oh, yeah, we can use this. There we go. Oh, wait, no, he's got one health. Oh, my goodness. Guys, I have made a huge mistake in this game already that I feel is costing us. I had no idea how much ammo we would need, and I have miscalculated severely. So we did get a little bit of rewards here. Oh, and everybody's super injured. We- Oh no, another fight? Can I retreat from these? I can abandon mission, forfeit all rewards. Considered failed. Man, we might already be looking at a situation where we have to do that. If we can keep using that ability, that's pulling a ton of weight for us right now. I think we give him the contraband ammunition. Oh, and we both get it. Not that it helps Casimirez. Oh, man. We are in bad shape here, guys. I think we take this shot here, maybe? No, I think we can clear those guys out with another rocket launcher. I think we use the first aid, because we are very beat up. I'm hoping they don't move around too much. I want to be able to use this rocket launcher to maybe finish all three of these guys off. Oh no, Chadwiga's getting really low. Let's use our, our rocket launcher here. Nice. Okay, the triple kill. That's substantial. Although we still have these two guys with rifles who I'm pretty worried about. Let's fake out. Oh, uh, no, I don't think that helps us because there's two of them so that not suppressed one can just act. I think she needs to heal herself. That's probably the most important move that we can make here. And the lucky miss, right when we need it. Do we take the clear shot? I think we do. Oh, there we go. Needed that. Let's use uh, the contraband ammunition. No? I can't do that? One or more targets are of the wrong type. Yeah, but I don't want to use it on that. I want to use it on her. Can I really not do that? It appears that I can't. That seems like maybe a bug. I don't feel that that should work that way. Well, this is really our only move, is to just keep shooting with our clear shot. Okay. That's fine. Yikes, but then we're building up these stamina penalties. I guess I can use the contraband ammunition now. Let's make this shot count. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, a lesson for the future. I'm um, thinking we need to bring lots and lots of ammo. Uh, maybe move this guy back so that he at least has the option of using the rocket launcher. I don't think we want to use it right now, but at least it's an option. I really want to take this guy out. 
Oh, come on, bleed, bleed, bleed. Or burn, there we go. So he should be dead. I believe he should be dead. Oh my god, and she's almost dead. Well, I think uh, it's safe to say we need to fake out this guy so that he cannot attack her. Wait, what? Oh, he burns at the end of his turn? I wasn't expecting that. Let's use the first aid here. It also looks like we don't have an option to use items during battle. Which kind of sucks. Uh, we need to move you back because we kind of need that rocket launcher. The clear out ability. I feel bad using it on one guy, especially now that we're out of ammo for it. Uh, but we kind of need to end this fight. Maybe use the first aid here. Yeah, yeah. Oh shoot. I think we just wait. Then take our. Oh no, we need. We would have to move. But that costs stamina, which I really don't want to do. Use this. Oh yeah, there we go. The crit. Oh yikes! I don't think fake out does anything here, because I think the the suppression ends at the end of the the turn. Oh! <gasps> I think I double clicked end activation and just got my guy killed. That, <laughs> oh my god. That is tragic. I can't believe I already got a guy killed. I don't know if this is worth continuing. We've already lost somebody. I think we are ill prepared for this mission. And I think we're just going to wipe our entire party out if we keep going. I think I've got to abandon here. And just now that I un have a little bit better understanding of how these missions work and how valuable, like how much ammo we need. Yeah, I, I wasn't expecting to be running into like five enemies at one time. Okay, yeah, let's abandon, unfortunately. I'm clearly not ready for this. Yes, complete the failed mission. Return to hideout. Holy cow, I just got my butt kicked. Look at all the attrition. Wow. <laughs> all right. Uh, so I think I'm going to have to go ahead and call an episode here. I know, sorry for the long video. We're running over an hour at this point. Uh, I, wasn't a I wasn't aware of the pacing of this game. It seems like these missions are going to take quite some time. Uh, so yeah, we'll call it a video here. I'll jump back in next time, see if I can redeem that terrible performance I just had. We're already down one party member. This could be a quick playthrough, and I might just have to start a new series. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Thank you guys for joining. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. I will see you in the next video.